Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the coolest mini PCs to ever hit the market. This is the all new Aya Neo Retro Mini PC AM02. And I've been really excited about getting my hands on this, not just because we've got a powerful CPU here, but the overall design and what they've built in with the new AM02 is really awesome. And it's something we frankly haven't seen in a mini PC yet. If you're familiar with the company Aya Neo, you know they do make some really awesome handhelds, but recently they've kind of dipped their toes into the mini PC market with their first release known as the AM01, which is more of a Macintosh inspired mini PC. But when it comes to the new AM02, we've got more of a retro console style looking PC here. And they did pack it with quite a powerful CPU or rather APU because it is powered by AMD. Now, just taking a look at the overall design, I'm sure you can get a feel for what this is kind of modeled after. Uh, we've got kind of an NES looking mini PC here, and I think they've done an absolutely amazing job. Love the colors here. On the bottom, as you can see, tons of ventilation here for pulling cool air in. And up front, we've got a pop-up panel to hide that front I.O. Seeing pictures of it really doesn't do it justice. I mean, this thing looks really good. But one of the most interesting things they've added here with the AM02 is this top screen. It's actually a touch screen and they're calling it a sub screen. We can get a lot of information about the PC and we can actually control the performance directly from this display. Inside the box, along with the AM02 mini PC, we're also gonna get our PD fast charger. This is actually a 100 watt charger. We've also got some USB type C to full size adapters. All of the plugs for around the world, USB Type-C cable, HDMI cable, and a small tool kit so we can get inside of this mini PC really easily and upgrade that storage. I personally can't get over how good this thing looks, and initially when they announced the AM01 and the AM02, I was more excited about their AM01 given that Macintosh design, but uh, yeah, they really knocked it out of the park with this one. Just had to give you a quick look at that. Love the action and the sound there. But when it comes to I.O. up front here, we've got our 3.5 millimeter audio jack, two full size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and a full function USB 4 port. So we can do display out of this or add an eGPU. Taking a look around back, we've got two full size USB 2.0 ports, full size display port 1.4 plus a full size HDMI port dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports and USB type C, which is only used for power delivery to the unit. And of course, when it comes to the overall specs of the Aya Neo Retro Mini PC AM02 for the APU, they opted to use the Ryzen 7 7840HS. So we've got eight Zen 4 cores and 16 threads, a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz with a boost up to 5.1. And since we're using that 7000 series APU, We've got the RDNA 3 based Radeon 780MI GPU with 12 compute units, and this will run up to 2700 megahertz. This mini PC supports SODIMM DDR5 RAM up to 5600 megahertz, and you can do up to 64 gigs here, but I've got a 32 gig model here running in dual channel. It'll also support up to an 8 terabyte M.2 NVMe drive. I've got a 1 terabyte installed here, but we also have Wi Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and out of the box, this is running Windows 11. Before we jump into anything else, I did want to give you a look at this screen here. Now, a couple of features are missing because this is an early review. Like uh, wallpapers, you can set up custom wallpapers and things like that once this is officially released. But as soon as we boot this up, you can see we've got a display on the screen. We've also got an LED indicator on the power button. And as soon as everything's completely booted, you can see we got our FPS on screen here. We've also got our fan speed, memory, storage capacity. Swiping over from the right will bring us to our time. So we've kind of got a little clock here with the date. We can also adjust the volume directly from the screen here. And soon enough, with a new update, we can actually add custom wallpapers here. I think that'll be really awesome. But one of the coolest things is we can actually adjust our TDP directly from here right now. We can basically control the performance of this mini PC from the top touch screen. And uh, we've got a few presets built in. So PC in office is gonna be 10 watts. I think AAA gaming is set at 27, retro gaming 15. We'll take a look at all of that. But it is fully adjustable from Aya Space. Okay, so here it is, been up and running for a while now. I've installed a bunch of stuff that we're gonna be testing out. And uh, as soon as I booted it up, you can see we've actually got a nice wallpaper here, Retro Mini PC AM02, this came pre-installed. And some of you may notice we've got a new widget down here. This is the new Aya Space widget. 
and it just makes it really easy to get into Aya space using a touchscreen or a mouse. You can also set up a key command on basically any controller to get in there if you want to. But taking a look, as you can see, we've got that Ryzen 7 7840HS, 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600, and of course we've got the Radeon 780M iGPU. Now obviously we're running Windows 11, but uh, I think a lot of the great stuff is actually in Aya space. So if we open this up, you can see we've got total TDP control from 5 watts up to 45. We've also got some pre-made profiles up here. AAA gaming, I've set to 45 watts. Normal gaming, sitting at 27. Retro gaming, 15. And PC and office work, just at 10. Just gonna go with normal gaming. Moving down a bit, our FPS limiter. We can raise this all the way up to 60 or anywhere in between to unlimited. TDP can be changed through any of these profiles and you can create your own custom profile if you'd like. We've also got a performance overlay. You can use Rivatuner or you can use FPS Thunder and I think this looks really good. A little bit of customization we can do here. We can turn off the fan speed, RAM and everything like that, but it gives us our FPS while we're playing a game. Not much setup you need to do at all, so it's really easy for anybody to kind of get in there. Full fan control, got some presets, or you could go totally custom with it. And of course, we can easily access Aya Space from a controller or a keyboard. So we've got our game launcher right here. Basically, it's going to scan all of our default directories, download some box art and everything for us. If we head in here, we can launch a game. We've also got options. We can delete the game completely from the PC or just remove from the library. This is actually really nice to have built in. That way we've got a nice little game launcher to work with. Installed games is going to give us a list of all the games we have installed right now. And we've got a lot of extra settings. From account settings, you can sign into your ISpace account. And we've got another section here known as subscreen. Now this is the built-in screen on the unit itself. And right now, since this is an early model, we don't have access to wallpapers on that screen. But uh, from here, you can change the style if you'd like to. Set up a 24-hour clock. You can update the weather, so to show weather on the screen itself. And of course, if we've got a firmware update, we can update directly from here. Performance, basically the same here. We've got that AAA, normal game, retro game, PC office, or we can set up our own custom preset. Moving down the list, got some normal stuff like Bluetooth control, network control, customize, IS space in general. You can change the theme, wallpaper, and uh, from here, you can actually go with different colors. So you can really make it your own. General settings, our server, time zone, date, controller. This is where we can set up a custom key config to open up Aya space. And I've got mine set up to hold RT and RB. Press up, that's gonna be my Aya key. Multitasking is left, task manager is down, screenshot, press right. Storage management, update, and of course about. Now there are more features coming to Aya Space 2.0 on the AM02, like uh, wallpapers, so we can set up custom wallpapers on the secondary subscreen that's on the PC itself, so we can do some customization over there. Now I want to move over to some real world gaming to show you what this thing can do. Keep in mind, we will be at 45 watts for all of these tests. We don't need to worry about battery here. If you want to lower the wattage on this for easier to run indie games, not a problem. You can do it from Aya Space or even the built-in screen, but we're going to be at 45. And the first game on the list is Pal World. At the time of making this video, this game hasn't been on the market that long. Right now, we're at 900p low settings, and I do see in the future we will get better performance out of this game. Right now, as it sits without a mod, we don't have access to FSR. So, uh, you know, taking FSR to balance that 1080p with something like this would be really awesome. But I just dropped that resolution down to 900, and uh, it does pretty good until we get a lot of effects on screen. I'm really going to chalk this up to, you know, the AMD drivers and the game not being optimized for these iGPUs. So we give it a little time, and yeah, I mean, we could definitely run this at a constant 60 FPS. Checking out Mortal Kombat 1, 1080p, low, and with these newer AMD drivers, I've noticed a nice little jump in performance in a lot of the stuff that I've been testing recently. Here we are at 1080p, low settings, constant 60 FPS, looking really good here, and of course adding some FSR and maybe taking it up to let's say medium would also work out, but I wanted to see what we could do at low with a true 1080p resolution, and it's really playable.
Horizon Zero Dawn, built-in benchmark, 1080p, medium. Maximum temps that I saw out of this APU while doing all of my testing at 45 watts was 86 every once in a while. Jump up there and then come right back down. We are under thermal throttle, and at 45 watts, this is doing just fine. With this one, we're at 1080p, medium, and by the end, we had an average of 74 FPS. It's been a while since I've tested Genshin Impact on the 780M iGPU, so I figured I'd throw it in here. 1080p medium settings, we do have this set at 60, and as you can see, we're getting a constant 60 FPS out of this game, and even at medium, it looks really good. I did take it up to high, and I noticed a couple dips under, that's why I went back down to medium, but with a high medium mix, you could definitely get by with this. Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium, no resolution scale, we don't need it for this game. We saw an average of 93 FPS with this, and sometimes you'll see it go over 100. Adding FSR or even Fidelity Cast does allow you to play this game at 1080p medium 120 FPS, which is amazing for an iGPU. And finally, Cyberpunk 2077. When it comes to these iGPUs, I always go to 1080p low and not the preset. You do have to go in and turn a few extras off because the low preset does have some stuff still set at medium. That's how you get this kind of performance out of the 780M, even at 45 watts. Overall, I think the new iNeo AM02 is putting down some really awesome performance. Given the fact that we can go up to 45 watts here, we can really unlock that power, and we can play AAA games on this mini PC. And in my opinion, it is one of the best looking mini PCs on the market right now. I love the aesthetic here, and the fact that we've got this touch screen up top, which allows us to adjust the performance on the fly is really awesome. Also gives us that on-screen FPS counter, so while we're playing a game, this will be a real-time FPS counter. And personally, I can't wait to see what the community does with this. It would be really cool to have little widgets on here, like let's say Pandora. You could actually control it directly from here. I do want to mention that Ioneo hasn't announced anything like that, but I'm sure as soon as the community gets their hands on this, we'll see some pretty awesome stuff from this sub-screen. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video. If you're interested in learning a little more or maybe even backing their Indiegogo for the AM02, I'll leave some links down below. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments. As soon as we get an update for this screen to show off those wallpapers and everything like that, I will be posting in my community section. Another thing I'd love to test on this is a Linux operating system. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, make sure you hit that like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.